Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Systems Technology Part 2, Module 11. Uh, we were talking about process FMEA and in context of that we were talking about a problem of a wax lining in the door interiors between the inner and the outer member uh, where there were potential causes of failures associated with rusting of the painting body or painted body or even rusting of the components like window regulators etc which are put inner uh, you know uh, inside the inner member of the door uh, and uh, there were various reasons uh, uh, or the causes due to which the failure would come, those were kind of identified. And the severity of uh, the problem as well as the occurrence uh, of the different causes of failures were sort of identified again uh, and ranked uh, in accordance. So we want to now look at the detectability. So uh, let us come back to this particular check sheet that we were talking about in this context where if you may remember we mentioned about the potential causes or failure mechanisms. Okay, the column 14 of this particular check sheet and then again rated the occurrence of this particular you know different uh, mechanisms which would cause the failure to happen. And uh, then we talk about the detectability that is how easy or difficult it is to detect and rank accordingly. So we look at the current process controls which are available. Okay. So one of these for example the manually inserted spray head not inserted far enough as I detailed last time it has a visual check each hour, uh, one per shift for film thickness, depth, meter and coverage. Okay. So uh, the operator here uh, has been instructed to uh, probably stop the line and check or maybe even you know in another case there is a supervisor of that particular zone which has been asked to do this visual check each hour where he uh, after out of whatever number of vehicles are produced in one hour, one of the vehicles he takes. and randomly picks it up and obviously he varies his time etc on the principle of uh, statistical randomness whatever he wants to introduce in the observation. And then he checks for the film thickness, the wax film thickness and also the uh, you know uh, thickness here is the depth in meters of course and also the coverage area of the wax within the inner and outer door. Okay. So here he finds out that by doing this kind of a manual inspection. Um, you know maybe about 50 percent of the times he is able to make it out whether the defect is sneaking out of the system. Okay. So obviously it is one per shift and in a uh, time of let us say 2.5 minutes uh, or maybe even like let us say 2 minutes uh, you have about 30 vehicles uh, rolling out in e each hour and he is only checking on one. Okay. So based on that still uh, he finds out that you know the there is only a 50 percent probability of detection of this manual sp uh, insert spray uh, inserted spray had not inserted far enough okay, by doing the visual check. The other uh, uh, potential cause was spray heads clogged and so he finds out what is you know let us let us look at what are the current process controls for preventing that from happening. So you basically test the spray pattern at startup and after idle periods and obviously there has to be a preventive maintenance program to clean the heads from time to time. So the company has put in place some kind of a spray board where uh, you know it, it sprays the uh, by putting the nozzle or inserting the nozzle on the center of that board and sees if the spray pattern matches the intended pattern that is supposed to come you know in a fully operational nozzle with zero clogging. Okay. So that is also again once in a while that he does this check and then obviously this is aligned more towards either the startup period where uh, the first vehicle has to be sprayed and also after let us say any idle time in between let us say the uh, production line stop for some time for lunch or some other purpose. So during that time again he does the uh, test spray pattern checking again okay. and there he is able to only detect these with 30 percent luck. Okay. So he has rated this particular detectability to be 3 out of 10 okay, the process engineer. Now you talk about the uh, next cause of uh, failure which is spray head reform due to impact and obviously the only way to do it is preventive maintenance program maintain the head from time to time and uh, there is almost a 
20 percent chance of detection of this kind of a uh, uh, you know failure mode okay, or a mechanism of failure, uh, which is causing, which is going to cause the deteriorated life of the door uh, because of the rusting problems etcetera. So, he identifies this to have a rank of 2. Okay, so, the detectability is 2 here and then finally, the spray time insufficient where the occurrence was about 80 percent of the times, the operator instructions uh, are given at that particular point and a lot sampling of 10 doors per shift is carried on. So, basically uh, let us say in a uh, production level of about 200 or 250 uh, cars, you are checking about 10 cars and uh, you are checking for coverage of critical areas in a very, very uh, accurate basis by pulling out the cars either into a bay or something and uh, that helps you to prevent uh, you know this uh, defect particular defect of wax coverage improper up to the extent of 70 percent. That means, the detectability really increases because of such a operator instruction from time to time and lot sampling uh, from time to time. Okay. So, uh, therefore, you have now rated all the detectabilities of the various process controls which are used for identifying you know or, or which which are used for identifying the various mechanisms of failures related to either manual uh, inserted manually inserted head not going far enough or related to either sprays heads spray heads getting clogged etcetera because of viscosity temperature or pressure issues or again you know related to the spray head deformed because of impact and false practices carried out by the operators on the line or spray tie insufficient okay and this whole uh, list of four causes have been identified in terms of their occurrences and rated and also the process controls associated with them have been identified for the detectability that with that particular control on is it possible to detect it with a higher percentage or a lower percentage. So, obviously, the RPN has to be calculated by a product of all the severity occurrence and the detection and in this particular case the severity for this defect of the overall set of defects which are there in the automob automotive paint shop is about 70 percent. So, 7 uh, has been rated as the severity here as you can see. So, severity does not change for any of these causes because these causes are actually leading okay, to the uh, failure mode which is being considered okay. and so therefore, you treat that as 7 uniformly all through and you make the product of the severity in uh, column 12, uh, the occurrence in column 14, 15 and the detectability in the column 17 and multiply them to find a RPN or a risk priority number of 280 for the first mode of failure which is the manually inserted spray head not inserted far enough, 105 for the next uh, head of uh, or next uh, mode of failure which is the spray heads clogged because of which this deteriorated life of door comes because of incomplete coverage of the waxes uh, within the door inner outer wax uh, within the door inner and outer. And then finally, the RPN of 28 for the spray head deformed case due to the impact on the operator and 392 for uh, the spray time insufficient. So, obviously, you have to now identify which is the mode of failure which is causing the highest RPM. In this particular case probably as you can realize the uh, 392 case which is illustrated here okay, and the uh, 280 are the two most impactful uh, modes because of which the potential failure would happen. So, you will have to do something to prevent them on a very urgent priority and then obviously, you can keep you know uh, the remaining ones. In this particular case, in fact, you can do uh, a comparison for 3 because you have quite a high RPN value in 3. You can see 280 is for the first cause that is manually uh, you know uh, inserted spray head, uh, 105 is for the second cause that is spray head is clogged and 28 for the third clause which is minor and uh, the, th the fourth cause spray size insufficient is 392. So, we can identify uh, the first cause, the second cause and the fourth cause and maybe just leave this untouched because it has a low RPN. So, we need not really address it. Obviously, when you do it for the second iteration after doing some uh, kind of a corrections or you know identified measures to counteract the uh, potential causes, you will have to again probably pick it up, but at this time we are leaving it. So, the 28 uh, uh, you know RPN is left over which is corresponding to the spray head deformed due to impact. It does not happen very severely or it does not happen many times you know. So, you can leave it uh, in fact and then we only talk about three different aspects or modes causing this failure of incomplete coverage. One aspect is related to the manually inserted spray head not inserted far enough for which the process control has been a visual check 
okay and uh, probably each hour once in a shift you know for the film thickness depth etc uh, uh, then you have the second cause as the spray head clogged because of viscosity temperature or pressure issues and there also you have to uh, have a process control of a testing of spray pattern and some preventive breakdown maintenance programs which are there and the third cause is the spray time insufficient which is in fact very high uh, 392 and uh, rpn and you know uh, you, here you are having a process control of operator instructions regularly or lot sampling uh, of 10 doors a shift to check whether the sufficient time is being spent by the operator on par particularly per vehicle etc and here you are getting the highest rpn so you have identified these three different causes and you try to take a countermeasure at this particular step so let's look at what are the countermeasures to eliminate these causes so here for example the uh, process engineer points out that if we add a positive depth stop uh, to the sprayer then uh, there may be a chance of uh, you know uh, the full proofing of this manually uh, inserted spray head not inserted far enough okay for example let's say if the nozzle uh, in this particular case as you are seeing has a tip right so this is the wax dispensing tip of the nozzle and this tip is supposed to go into this particular region here and it's going all the way into this uh, region in this direction uh, finally when the nozzle comes to this particular point it should start the dispensing so if we can make a limit switch there which can be pressed to ensure that the wax is coming out so basically the nozzle has gone into this inner door and it is going to hit some particular region where there is a limit switch which gets you know actuated because you know uh, obviously uh, the construction of the door is such that the if you look at this this is the inner member and this is the outer member they together hem right so there is some kind of a bending of the profiles so that there is a hemming at the bottom here and so there is less gap here okay in this lower end so if the nozzle is going all the way down into that less gap zone then maybe some limit switch or a positive depth stop can be actuated which starts the flow of the wax okay otherwise the wax will not come out of the nozzle then it may be a full proofing or a, as in the japanese you know uh, call this pokai okay uh, which can be placed so that whenever the nozzle is going into this smaller gap in the hemming region of the inner and outer door the actuation of the limit switch because of a striking of the nozzle with respect to the inner or outer members is going to start the wax disposal here okay and before it has gone into that depth stop region uh, the, uh, the you know uh, there is there is no emanation of the wax which comes out so this would be a full proofing that can be done which they have recommended and they have uh, given a completion date and a target and a responsibility so here the assembly engineering the manufacturing engineering comes into picture and some fictitious date has been uh, given here for the manufacturing engineering so obviously there are two functions attained here one is obviously the depth stop which gives or which ensures that the dispensing would happen or the limit switch would be pressed and the other one obviously is that you know it is starting to automatically spray once that particular depth has been reached so we can say that this is a depth stop providing automatic spraying of the wax okay so the idea is now that this door profile as i showed you here is quite complex you can see the door profile to be in this particular manner here okay and so wherever there is this hemming region where there is a change of the gap between the inner and the outer member because of which there is a spray actuation and the moment the nozzle reaches that particular zone it ensures that the wax has disposed of otherwise the wax will not dispose of so unless and until the operator goes to that particular region the disposal of the wax will not be there and it can be detected using the process control of a visual check of one per shift that has been uh, done and it is some kind of an automation okay based on which this uh, um, uh, would solve the problem of manually inserted spray had not inserted far enough so the manufacturing engineer uh, uh, you know added this uh, stop and uh, the sprayer was checked online and uh, the only problem was that you know once the automatic spraying method which i illustrated earlier uh, was implemented by the manufacturing engineering they find that it is rejected due to the complexity of the different doors on the same line so obviously the gaps etc between the inner and outer member 
uh, of a multi-model production system may be different because there are many other different uh, you know uh, assemblies door assemblies which are being marked so therefore uh, the uh, second solution of an automatic spray as the depth has come was eliminated and only the fact that adding a positive uh, depth uh, stop to the sprayer uh, that is you know uh, it is like a full proofing that it would start the uh, spraying uh, that was uh, sort of added to the system okay, and it worked out very well. So, now they have done a severity detection and uh, occurrence ratio here and you see the severity is same because the defect does not get changed or the overall severity does not get changed, but the, the because of this countermeasure which has been taken of the, uh, the depth stop, the occurrence has reduced from 80 percent to about 20 percent and obviously, the detectability is still the same because we have not controlled the process current process control which is a visual check and that happens to be 5 in this particular case. So, the overall RPN value comes out to be 70. So, obviously, the 280 RPN has been reduced to 70 because of the less occurrence of this defect owing to this automation that has been provided. Okay. So, in this particular way, you have reduced the RPN value. Uh, by taking a certain countermeasure or a counteraction. So, we are going to look into all the other uh, um, uh, failure modes which are there and different countermeasures in the subsequent uh, module. In the interest of time, we will probably close this module right here and go ahead with the other modes of failures and the same analysis and how the RPN can be changed in a later on module. Thank you so much.